Hello everyone. In this INR number 16, we are going to discuss about cystic fibrosis, which is again a very important PYQ for all exam. So what is cystic fibrosis? It is a hereditary autosomal recessive inheritance disorder, right? It is autosomal recessive inheritance disorder where you will find there is a mutation in the CFTR gene, right? Where is the location of CFTR gene? On chromosome number seven long arm. Remember, if you look at the name cystic, so this can be mnemonic. Q, Q, cystic, Q is the catch point so q is the catch point so this will be the long arm of the chromosome number seven so what will happen because of this because of this we will see there is a deletion and due to deletion you will see deletion will be shown by the delta f508 actually this is a deletion which is happening at the 508 location so remember what i'm saying it is a deletion which is happening at the 508 location and in this deletion there is a loss of ff is for phenyl alanine so that is what we have to remember because of this delta f0 f508 deletion phenyl alanine at position 508 will be lost so that is the basic pathogenesis of the cystic fibrosis right so normally cftr gene what they do they in they will be encoding for atp gated chloride channel remember they will encode for atp gated chloride channel so here we have to understand two very clear thing that these atp gated chloride channel which is controlled by cftr gene will be having two different function at two different places when you are talking about sweat gland normally you will see chloride is coming inside and along with that sodium is also coming right so chloride is coming inside so now you can see that chloride reabsorption remember normal cftr gene when you are looking at the sweat glands chloride is reabsorbed right so that is what i said normal cftr gene when you will see this uh, chloride channel what will happen there will be a reabsorption of the chloride in the sweat gland Whereas in cystic fibrosis, what will happen in cystic fibrosis? Because cystic fibrosis, this will be not normal. They have mutation. So because of that mutation, what we are going to see here, you can see the cystic fibrosis. Now cystic fibrosis, you cannot see any chloride reabsorption. So no reabsorption. So what is happening? Chloride is not reabsorbed and they are coming in the sweat itself. Right. And that is why chloride and sodium will be high in case of the cystic fibrosis. But when you talk about the GIT or the lung, both places, remember GIT or the lung, both places, chloride is not reabsorbed. They are secreted. So please remember, they are secreted. So normal CFTR GN, what they are doing, they are conducting secretion of the chloride where in the lungs and GI tract. Right. That is what I wanted to say that lungs and GI tract, there is a secretion of the chloride, whereas in sweat gland, normally there is a reabsorption of the chloride. So that is why in cystic fibrosis, sweat, sodium will be and chloride level will be high. They will be increased. That is why you are seeing chloride and sodium level will be increased in the cystic fibrosis because of the sweat duct. Right. Whereas in the lungs and GIT, as you can see, when it is normal, chloride is coming outside, sodium is coming inside and water is coming here. So that is why you can see mucus is normal. But what happens, what happens during the cystic fibrosis because of the mutation, now chloride is not going out, right? So chloride is inside, so they will absorb more water, there will be more absorption of the sodium and that is why mucus will be very thick and dehydrated. Right? That is the basic pathogenesis of the cystic fibrosis. That is why in cystic fibrosis, lungs and GIT, there will be a decreased chloride secretion, decreased chloride secretion and increased sodium and water absorption. So remember, absorption is getting increased. So what are the clinical findings in the cystic fibrosis? Chronic cough. If you talk about the pulmonary symptom, most common pulmonary symptom will be chronic cough and they will be having recurrent pulmonary infections. So recurrent pulmonary infections because of the pseudomonas is more commoner. Remember pseudomonas is more commoner than staphylococci if examiner is asking. And cystic fibrosis is one of the very common etiology for the bronchiectasis. I can say like this, bronchiectasis is most commonly associated with which genetic disorder? So your answer will be cystic fibrosis, right? So please remember bronchiectasis is also very important. 
because cystic fibrosis they will affect wherever secretions are there so pancreatic insufficiency will be there that can cause diabetes mellitus that can lead to malabsorption with steatorrhea and because of steatorrhea there will be a loss of fat soluble vitamin so because of this what will happen you will see fat soluble vitamin deficiency so who are the fat soluble vitamins vitamin a d e and k so all these things will be reduced in these patient whenever mother will be kissing or uh, you know uh, tasting the baby so that times you will be telling that salty tasting of the skin whenever mother will kiss their baby newborn babies or babies they will have this kind of presentation if it is a young adult then you can see male or infertility remember cystic fibrosis male infertility is because of absence of vast difference right that is due to absence of vast difference and diagnosis how you will do the diagnosis you will check the sweat chloride level you have seen that sweat chloride level will be increased so there will be increased sweat chloride level how much it should be more than 60 milli equivalent per liter right they should have two cftr gene mutation that can be diagnostic or abnormal nasal potential difference test will be there right so these are the three important thing for the diagnosis sweat chloride increase and two CFTR gene mutation and abnormal nasal potential difference test. These are the diagnostic finding. And for the treatment of the cystic fibrosis, it is having so many things to involve, right? So they will start from the chest physiotherapy, right? So in chest physiotherapy, that, that will be giving airway clearance. So what we can do for airway clearance, you can give the aerosolized Dornase alpha, which is DNAs right or inhaled hypertonic saline for the mucus clearance because mucus is accumulated in the uh, in the lungs and the git because they will become thick right so you remember that the lung they'll be thick so that is why we have to we have to make them diluted we have to make them thinner and that is why you have to have inhaled hypertonic saline for your patient or you have to use dornase alpha right azithromycin is for the infections or acute exacerbations and ibuprofen for the anti-inflammatory effect pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy can be used for pancreatic insufficiency like a pancrelipase this is the pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy right cystic fibrosis there is an interesting latest update that is triple combination therapy triple combination therapy is known as tricafta tricafta is involving three drugs alexacaftor tejacaftor Tejacaftor is a CFTR corrector and Evacaftor, which is a potentiator. So there are three drugs in the Tricaptor, Elaxacaftor, Tejacaftor and Evacaftor, right? What is their function? Their basic goal is to make mucus less thick and less sticky in the airway of the patient. And they will improve the lung function. They will improve the quality of life. And remember, this is very, very useful when a patient is having this mutation, which we have started in the beginning. Chromosome number 7Q, right? Delta 5, Delta phenylalanine 508 deletion at chromosome number 7Q. So when they have this kind of deletion, they will be responding to trick after therapy, where we are using three drugs, Elexac after, Tejac after, and Evac after. So keep learning. My best wishes for your exams. Bye-bye.